This episode of the Practice of Therapy podcast is sponsored by Mental Health Match, mentalhealthmatch.com, and also sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. Over 15 years ago, when I started my private practice, I had to learn a lot, and most of it the hard way, and I don't think you need to do the same. Hi, I'm Gordon Brewer, a licensed psychotherapist, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. Join me in this journey of discovery as we have conversations with other leaders and professionals in both the mental and allied health fields. Join us as we explore both the business and clinical sides of running a private practice. This is episode number 263 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. I'm Gordon Brewer and glad you're with us. And if this is your first time listening to the podcast, welcome and hope you'll come back for more and take time to follow us or subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it. So in this episode, I'm really looking forward to you getting to hear from um, somebody that I've gotten to know over this past year, and that's Rafi Billick. And Rafi is a therapist in the Baltimore area, and um, he has been really active in the Google Google Workspace for Therapists Facebook group that I started a few years ago, um, just really in conjunction with the course that I've got out there, Google Workspace for Therapists. But back in 2020, when we had that whole pandemic thing going on, that group just exploded. And I think it's probably because more people were working from home and they were looking for ways to get more organized with their systems and processes. And one of the things about Google Workspace is that it has so many great tools that you, that is really kind of compatible in a way for people in therapy practices to use uh, in their practice. So in this, in this particular episode, Rafi and I are going to delve into that and talk about Google Workspace, talk about HIPAA a little bit and Gmail and all those kinds of things of questions that people tend to want to ask um, around using Google Workspace. So, but before we get to Rafi and speaking of Google Workspace, how'd you like that little transition? Um, Google Workspace for Therapist course, the course that I started a few years ago, I think it was started back in probably about 2017, probably not too long after I started this podcast, I put together a course, an online course that's still available on ways in which you can use the tools of Google Workspace um, in your practice. So with with that, uh, obviously Google Workspace changes a lot. It's gone through some name changes, used to be known as G Suite, but now it's called Google Workspace. I've updated the course a few times along the way since I put the course together, but needless to say, it's time to update it again. And one of the things that I'll, I'm wanting to do this time around is to get some collabor- get some collaborators to be contributors to the course. And so if you're using Google Workspace for therapists, uh, in your practice, and you have some tips and hacks and things that you've figured out about using Google Workspace, I'd love for you to maybe consider being a contributor to the updates of the course. And so if you'll go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash GWS updates, you can fill out a Google form, um, no surprise there, a Google form on what you would like to contribute and be maybe be considered for as being a contributor to the updates of the course. And when I say updates to the course, one of the questions I get a lot about the course is if somebody enrolls in the course and there are updates, do they have to repurchase the course? And the answer is no. Once you enroll in the course, you have lifetime access to the course, plus any updates that occur over time, you get those updates. You get the, you get the course um, 
revamped every time. And it's just a, a, a one-time enrollment and uh, get lifetime access. So it's a, it's a pretty good pretty good deal, I think. And you can find out more about that course and the other courses that I have available by just simply going to practiceoftherapy.com and clicking on the uh, little courses button that you'll see there at the top of the page there. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that uh, before we get to my uh, interview with with Rafi. So and also real quickly before we get to my conversation with Rafi. I'd love for you to hear more from our sponsors of the podcast, along with a little blurb from one of the one of the other podcasters um, in the Sightcraft Network. So I'm so happy to have Mental Health Match as one of our sponsors, along with Therapy Notes. And so here's a little more about them and how they can be of help to you in your practice. Most therapists know that directories can be a good source of referrals, but which directories are really worth it? We are excited to share with you Mental Health Match. Mental Health Match helps nearly 50,000 clients find a therapist every month. Their smart technology ensures you get shown to only the clients who are a good fit for your practice based on the client's presenting issues, cultural needs, and budget. And their matching system helps clients feel an initial sense of confidence in you as a clinician. If you're looking for a new way to get more clients, try Mental Health Match for free today. Just go to mentalhealthmatch.com and use referral code PRACTICE for 90 days free. Trusted by thousands of clinicians across the U.S., Mental Health Match is ready to help you grow your practice with the clients you want. That's mentalhealthmatch.com with referral code PRACTICE. Hi, I'm Whitney Owens. If you don't know me, I am the person behind the Wise Practice Podcast, which is part of the Sightcraft Network of Podcasts. I am so proud to be a part of this network, along with my good friend, Gordon Brewer, who's doing such amazing work on helping people on their practice journey. If you haven't discovered the Wise Practice Podcast yet, you can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts. I'd love for you to join us as we explore how to grow a faith-based practice that brings you the income you need and the lifestyle you want. Be sure to check out the podcast and other helpful information at WhitneyOwens.com. There you will learn more about the Wise Practice community, how to become a member, as well as information on the 2023 Wise Practice Summit. And hey, Sightcraft Network is a sponsor, so hope you can make it. One of the keys to a successful private practice is having the right systems and processes in place to make things run as smoothly as possible. With a system like Therapy Notes, you'll have more time to spend with what matters most, your clients. Therapy Notes is a complete practice management system with everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with patients remotely, create rich documentation, and bill insurance right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. Your clinical records will be secure with less paperwork, which means you can give a much better quality of care. It's the EHR that Gordon uses in his practice. Be sure to check them out today by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes, and be sure to use the promo code Gordon to get two months free. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm glad to have with me today Rafi Billick. And so, Rafi, as I start with everyone, tell folks a little bit about yourself and how you've landed where you've landed and kind of your private practice story. Sure, yeah. Um, I landed where I landed pretty much by accident. Um, Just kind of, I have a small group practice now, and I totally fell into that. I moved here to Baltimore, what is it now, eight, nine years ago, uh, and I opened up shop as a solo practitioner, um, and I also had a full-time job at the time, which I still have, uh, mm-hmm. and so I was working part-time on the practice, and then I got, I couldn't handle more clients, because I wasn't, I wasn't saying like a full caseload, and I was like, oh, gee, I, I got to help some more people, so I, I guess I, I should hire somebody, so I did, and then all of a sudden, I had a group practice and didn't even know it. And then we got full there. I was like, I guess I gotta hire somebody else. So I did that. Uh, and so now I'm 
managing things in a way I never really dreamed of. I never saw myself as a business owner, but here we are. Awesome. Awesome. That's, I always love hearing people's stories. And I think, uh, you know, people either go into private practice kind of intentionally, but also like, like I've heard from you and several other people that just kind of did it. As my daughter used to say when she was little, I did it on accident. (laughs) So, so um, I know one of the things uh, you really, how you and I connected Rafi was through the Google Workspace for Therapists Facebook group uh, that you've been really active in. And I know that you're using a lot of the tools of Google Workspace uh, in your practice. You want to just kind of walk us through how you're using it and how you kind of landed on that. Yeah, sure. Um, Well, so I landed on that again by accident. I mean, I knew I had to get a business uh, email address. I didn't want to use, you know, uh, Rafi's awesome therapy at gmail.com. So I got myself a a domain, baltimoretherapycenter.com, and then I got an email. And then, you know, I just started putting everything on there. Like, I I use it for everything, pretty much. I use it as my EHR. I I just keep my notes in in Google Docs, and I, you know, I send out emails from there, and everything's just really coordinated through there. And I've been a fan of it, and I, I looked over time at the different EHRs, and I just never really saw the value for me. I know for some people it does. Mm-hmm. And certainly, I think one of the biggest um, reasons for that, for that, for me would be, you know, if I took insurance, which I don't, but billing mm-hmm. insurance obviously is a big thing. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of EHRs will do that automatically with a click of a button, and that's wonderful and great. I'm a cash practice, and I don't need that. And so many of the bells and whistles uh, you know, I, I never need it. You know, Google comes along with a, a HIPAA compliant telehealth platform, Google Meet. Uh, you know, I get everything I need for, for six bucks a month. Uh, mm-hmm. And that was for me, like one of the big motivators was like, why would I want to pay lots more when I could pay six bucks a month for everything? So mm-hmm. now I'm spending a little bit more per month with, with some of the bells and whistles. But I tell people when they're starting up as a solo practice, you really can get everything you need for six bucks a month. Uh, and that's, you know, an encouraging way to start when it, when you're starting with one or two clients, it really feels a lot safer not to be, you know, having a major expense on the HR side. Right, right, yeah, and that, I think you're, I think you're exactly right, and I think a kind of a, a delineation there. I know I did a, an episode of, you know, it might have been last year, um, just about comparing using Google Workspace to having an EHR, and I think you're exactly right. Kind of the d- delineation in my mind is if you are an insurance-based practice, you're really better served by having a a dedicated EHR because Google Workspace isn't really specifically for therapists. But um, by having the paid uh, Google Workspace account, you're exactly right. You can make it HIPAA secure and you get the BAA, which is what one of the big things that you need in order to make it HIPAA compliant or HIPAA secure. Right. I'm a bit of a HIPAA nerd. So I, I've made sure to be, you know, to be on top of all that. Um, right. And it's really, really quite easy with Google to to take care of that. Although, of course, as you probably are aware, you know, HIPAA compliance is not checking a box. It's a set of behaviors and making sure you're doing things right. It's a, it's a different conversation. But yeah, it's definitely, you yeah. know, very easy to accomplish with Google right. Workspace. Right, right. And I think, you know, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, I've mentioned not only in my the course that I have, which is hopefully going to be, I'm going to be revamping it here soon, but the um, Google Workspace for Therapist course, I, I spend a whole lesson on HIPAA and just for people to understand that, because I think one of, one of the things that uh, I like to call it is I think a lot of times people have HIPAA anxiety. And yeah. Um, yeah, and I don't think that that's necessarily, they don't have to necessarily worry about that. Certainly, you've got to put some things in place, but it's yeah. not not as, um, I don't think it's as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's as a big of a task as a lot of people re- realize it is. Right. But there, there is a lot of information and a lot that goes mm-hmm. into HIPAA overall. And so it definitely is daunting. I, I ran a workshop called your No Judgment Introduction to HIPAA. Mm-hmm. which was basically about getting people to understand you, you can get pretty HIPAA compliant without a lot of effort and a lot of anxiety. And so mm-hmm. I agree that, you know, get, getting in there, it, it's a hard step to take. But once you're, once you're in, getting things to a place where you're decently compliant and, and feeling good is not so hard at all. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, I would think at the core of it all really is what we do as clinicians anyway, and that particularly in the mental health 
um, arena is we're we're bound to confidentiality, and that's that's really the the crux of HIPAA is is keeping keeping people's inf- information private and protected. Yeah, yeah. yeah basis. Yeah, yeah. So um, if you don't mind, Rafi, walk us through kind of how you've got your platform kind of set up with using Google Workspace and and what that looks like. And also, I know you're using another kind of add-on or um, little thing. It's not necessarily a little thing, but it's a great tool, and that's Jot Forms. Um, You've got that integrated as well. But walk us through just kind of how you've got things set up. Sure. So I'll start with the job form. I picked up job form because it helps me automate a lot of tasks because I'm very happy about. Um, but that is another, it, it used to be a, a small expense. Now they they obviously raised the price along with everybody else in the world. So it's gotten to be a, a, a not insignificant expense, but the, the amount of time it saves me at my stage in, in the business is really nice. But so even without that, you know, you have your um, your Gmail that you you probably want to have anyways to communicate with clients. Um, I use Google Voice. Uh, to for a HIPAA compliant phone system. Again, you don't need that. That is another extra expense, but you can use, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you're a solo practitioner, you can use your cell phone. Um, you know, we, we don't need to get into the weeds of all the HIPAA stuff with group practices right now. We can, we can get there later. Uh, but yeah, so I have Google Voice, which is a small extra expense. Um, and uh, I have people, you know, emailing me. I, I have a form that um, you can use a, a Google form. I used to use Google form on my website as a contact form, also compliant. They'll email me, call me, whatever it is. Uh, and then I run them through my, you know, the, the, the spiel, here's what we do, which like, you know, we do this, would you like to be a client? Someone wants to be a client. I, in my practice, I take a payment up front that avoids a lot of no-shows. And then we send them paperwork, which is, again, I used to use Google Forms. Um, they just type in all the, you know, check off the boxes, read the terms and consents, fill in their name. Uh, that gets sent to me um, and it's stored in Google Sheets. That's where it stays. Um, it's uh it's easy enough to I used to just you know click on that uh print the print it out sort of to a PDF and then save it there on Google Drive again that you know it's a matter of a couple seconds um and then I have a folder for them for that client where I'll just write notes in a Google document so mm-hmm. it's all it's all fairly straightforward you know a couple of different pieces together again with job forms I'm able to automate a lot of it Google without job forms you can automate some of it but there's a little bit more manual doing but again it takes a second here a second there you send somebody an intake form. You know, they you click a link or you have a link on your website and they fill that out and it goes right into your system. Um, and it's really quite nice and straightforward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so how um, how was it that you learned how to do all of this? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, let me think about that. How did I, I again, I think just trial and error bumping around. Um, I mean, using Google documents wasn't, you know, there's no learning curve. You open up a document and you type in it. And that's just what I started doing. I was like, well, hey, that's that's easy. It just doesn't cost me extra money. Yeah. So I started doing that. Uh, and you know, I, I looked into some of the uh, legal questions I might have had, um, you know, in terms of like signing it and stuff like that. And I, I found out that there's really no issues of, of legal compliance in using that. And so that's just what I did. And, you know, Google Forms, again, is really fairly straightforward. Um, if you're very, you know, uh, tech phobic, it might be a little bit daunting, but once you get into it, it's really you know point and click, um, and just putting together a form. It was it was really simple. I, I that was you know I was just going for simple, you know, understandable, cost effective, and just mm-hmm. it just sort of did itself. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think one of the, one of the things that can happen is we can make things really complicated for ourselves. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be. I always wondered why people were going through these hoops, you know, to. Look, you know, simple practice there and that's whatever they, they work for folks at different stages. But like, you know, for some people are starting up and how do I do this with simple? How do I do that? And I just never understood why we needed to go there. For me, when I started, I just I just used you know Google Documents and Google Sheets and all that stuff. It did what I needed. And I felt so good about I know how to use this. It's simple. Doesn't cost a lot mm-hmm. of extra money. So this, this is how I always saw it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, and and. and uh, for me, it was pretty much the same way when I first went into uh, private practice. I was using Google Docs pretty much exclusively, and then, and then as I, I mean, Google, Google Workspace. It was called uh, um, Google, Google something at work or something back then, and then it went to G Suite. Uh, so that's that's how far back I go with it. But 
yeah. And so really, and then really solving the problem of the URL with your, with your email, um, being able to use my, my practice URL, kingsportcounseling.com for my, it, within Gmail was a, was a big kind of selling point for me. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, other thing we need to probably need to mention, and I know this is something that you've, you do. Um, and I think everybody has to measure their comfort level on this, but you also use a third party uh, add on for Gmail that does the true end to end encryption with emails. Right. So um, there's a lot going on with that. The truth is, in my opinion, this is going to become obsolete in the near future, mm -hmm. right? Just to give a quick, you know, run through um, e email and HIPAA. Um, I've I sort of written a blog post about this to, to clarify it for people because it's, it's it's kind of confusing. But um, you know, Gmail uh, and most email servers encrypt their emails using TLS, which is the standard you know security system. Mm -hmm. And they all, you know, ninety percent of them, I think, use this 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 uh, TLS security, which is good for HIPAA compliance. But like a very small percentage of, of backwater email systems don't use it. And if you were to email somebody without encryption, without them asking you to do that, so that's a HIPAA problem. So to avoid any possibility of that happening, it's good to have an encryption add-on to your Gmail. <clears throat> I maintain it is not strictly necessary for HIPAA compliance. You can be compliant without it. But again, the system I use is $6 mm -hmm. a month per user which is really, again, not a big cost, especially if you're just a solo for six bucks a month. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. And it, it, it takes nothing at all out of the email. Like, there's no extra buttons. There's no extra anything. Unless somebody's using one of the non-secure email systems, they'll get a message, hey, click here uh, for mm -hmm. an escrow email. But mm -hmm. uh, for most of the emails, nobody notices anything. You know, so there's a couple of systems like that, Luxi, Powerbox. Um, I just found Luxi to be uh, just cheaper. I mean, they do basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. so do that, And so I think, you know, it is worthwhile. It's easy. Um, and um, I just, I think it's a good way to go. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, as you, um, I know one of the things too, that you've done, Rafi, is put together some systems and courses and that kind of thing for people. Um, just uh, kind of sharing, sharing what you have put together. You want to say some more about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I put this site together, uh, workspaceehr.com to where you learn about using workspace as an EHR. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I kind of just fell into that because I was using this and people were interested and people wanted to know what I did. And so I, I put up some videos about how I set things up. Um, I have a package where I, I do it for people just because some people don't want to bother with it. But mm -hmm. it's really, you know, it's fairly straightforward. And I, I, I like to help people with this. I, I have some blog posts about the different aspects, the email part, uh, forms, collecting payment, that's another thing that you know the EH the the formal EHRs will will do nicely for you is that it's a payment system, mm -hmm. um, but they also they, there's a premium with that right they charge a higher rate than other options you can get so I just use a third party uh, a credit processor which is uh, you know lower cost than anywhere else I found mm -hmm. and I, I love this company that I use it's called Commission Buddies and they they have just incredible customer service and so I just I'm very happy again I you know I I have definitely pieced together my system and I show people how I've done that on this website. Uh, mm -hmm. And some people just want it automatic and are willing to pay the premium for not to have to think about the different pieces. And I understand that. I was mm -hmm. willing to put a little bit of extra work to to put it together myself, and it cost me a lot less. And, you know, over the long term, that, that comes out to something significant. Right, right. And, and I, you make a very good point. One of the things that I think, um, at least some of the, the conversations that I hear from people, like on the Google Workspace um, for Therapist community on Facebook, um, one of the things is, is I think people have to recognize if they want to use Google Workspace as an EHR, there is a lot of setup you need to do on the front end to get the systems and processes in place that you want to use. And it's not quite, it's not a plug and play kind of thing like you would find with a, with an EHR. Um, so you have That's to have a little yeah. bit, yeah, you have to have a little bit of, little bit of tech savvy. It's not that complicated, at least if I figured it out, I think most anybody else could figure it out. But some people are just totally intimidated by that. 100%. I think that if somebody is, is starting just a solo small practice, the amount of input energy is really very low. You know, it's just email, 
uh, you know, check off a box with a HIPAA compliance, um, which again, there's, you know, there's a video to show you how to do that easily. Uh, and then you know, open up a Google document. It's you know, if you're setting up a group practice and and have more systems you need to set up, yeah, there's some setup work. But I think you know, for folks who started like I did, just like okay, here we go. I'm just I'm just gonna open up shop. I don't think that it's really um, it's hardly uh, a barrier. You know, you mm-hmm. tech savvy or not, if you can use Google, um, then then it's fairly straightforward. And I um, you know, I think it's a great way to to start off. If you're gonna just, you know switch your whole group practice over to it, then yeah, there's definitely a lot of setup that would go into it. But again, it's, it's manageable. It's not. Uh, it's, it's not terrible. Right, right. And I would say for for at least for my practice, I use. Of course, I'm an insurance based practice with my practice, and I use kind of a hybrid system. We use. I like to think of it as we use the um, Google Workspace for, um, you know, most of the bi- kind of the business side of things, and that is just with our email, you know, in office documents. Um, being able to use the calendar, Google Calendar, which I love, um, all of those kinds of things are are really great for our in office use. But kind of the clinical side, because we are sending off um, insurance claims and that sort of thing, we use Therapy Notes for that. But one one of the things nice about um, um, Google Google Workspace is that it integrates well with a lot of different applications. Oh, yeah. sure. And one one in particular is, is that um, for me, I've got on my phone, my Google Calendar, and I've got it integrated with um, my Therapy Notes Calendar. It just, I can't make appointments through Google Calendar, but I can look and it it shows me what appointments I have with people come up on the calendar in a in a secure way. Right. I use Google Calendar. I have, uh, I have a virtual assistant who has access to all the calendars of all my staff and can just see at a glance where the open spots are and, and plug people in. Right. Um, yeah, just to talk about JotForm for a minute, maybe, you know, JotForm mm-hmm. also integrates my Google Calendar. And I, I, you know, I used to be doing a lot of things manually in terms of sending out emails and passing things around. And mm-hmm. I just came to a point where I wanted to automate. Um, and the truth is you can do more automation in Google. Uh, that's my next frontier is I'm learning Google Apps Script which allows you to tinker around on the back end. That is definitely not for everybody and certainly not, right. not for most right. therapists. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of you know power you can you can go under the hood there. But with JotForm, again, it's fairly straightforward. Now I, I use a form on JotForm. Someone fills out their initial um their payment for their session and they automatically get an email with the information they need, location, link, uh, cancellation policy, et cetera. And then they have the link to the intake form. So they click on the intake form. And then they fill that out, and that shows up automatically in Google Drive. And then the the, uh, the therapist gets an uh, an email: Hey, this this person has filled out their intake. Uh, the VA has got an email. So just everything gets passed around very automatically, and I have to think very little about it. Um, mm-hmm. So that has become a little bit of an expense, but sort of at this stage in in, in the game for me, you know, th- there is enough cash flow to to justify such an expense, and certainly the time that it saves me is great. So oh, I've been yeah. a big fan of JotForm as well, and I've been telling people about it. But now um, I think that the minimum level for HIPAA compliance is $99 a month. So you have to be at a certain level with a certain size of your practice to, to feel like that's mm-hmm. worth it. You don't have mm-hmm. to have that for every user, mind you, like in EHR. You just mm-hmm. have to have that for whoever is uh, tinkering around back there. So maybe you, if you're going to make forms, and then your VA, if you have one. And so it's not for mm-hmm. everybody. But uh, again... For me, it was a justifiable expense, and I think people get to their own level where that becomes needed and wanted. Right, right. Well, well, Rafi, I want to be respectful of your time, and I know we could probably spend all day talking on this topic. Oh, could we? Could we? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, tell folks how they can get in touch with you, and if they want to find out more about your um, uh, Google Workspace EHR stuff and that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. So uh, my workspace stuff is at workspaceehr.com. Uh, and I'm info at workspaceehr.com. So people can find me there. Uh, my regular practice is baltimoretherapycenter.com. So you can poke around there, see how the forms are at work out on the, on the, uh, on the website. Uh, and that's where I'm at. Well, Rafi, I, I enjoyed our conversation and I hope that uh, we can reconnect again here soon.
Well, thanks again to Rafi for joining me in this particular episode. Um, as you can tell um, by our conversation, there's just a lot of a lot of cool things that you can do with Google Workspace, in particular within your office. I think uh, for those of us that have used Gmail for a while, we know it's uh, there's a, just a lot of different things that you can do with Gmail uh, in filtering messages and that kind of thing. And so it's a, a pretty powerful tool. And then all the other other applications and tools within Google Workspace just offers a lot of versatility. Um, and and as I think I mentioned in this particular episode, one one thing I'll mention here um, is that um, you can certainly use Google Workspace as kind of a electronic documentation tool. Um, I would say, though, if you are insurance based, you'd really want to use something more like Therapy Notes uh, because it has got the uh, connection with a clearinghouse and that sort of thing. Google Workspace is not specifically for um, therapists or mental health practices, but it can be it can be um, used in other ways. And so anyway, I just say that on the front uh, here on the back end, uh, uh, rather about that. And uh, again, you know, Therapy Notes is a is a, um, a sponsor of this podcast and I'm a big fan of theirs. So, but uh, anyway, not to go too far down that rabbit trail. Again, if you are using Google Workspace and you feel like you've got some tips and hacks that you'd like to tell other pe- folks about or share and would like to be a contributor to the updates of the upcoming um, updates to the Google Workspace for Therapists course, um, be sure and go to practiceoftherapy.com slash GWS updates and fill out the Google form there and we'll start the conversation. So again, thanks to everyone for joining us and be sure and follow us wherever you might be listening. Also, big thanks again to Mental Health Match. They have really perfected the online directory concept for therapists and in a recent review of uh, online therapist directories, uh, they found that more than 90% of therapists that use um, Mental Health Match, that they recommended it. And this is because Mental Health Match is more likely than any other directories to send inquiries from clients who are a good fit for your practice. Um, they have a smart matching system that's low cost and over thousand uh, over over 10,000 clients coming to it every week. Mental Health Match is a great way to find clients, the clients that you want, and you can try Mental Health Match for free for 90 days by just going to mentalhealthmatch.com and use the referral code PRACTICE. And also, again, big thanks to Therapy Notes for being a sponsor of the podcast. Therapy Notes is the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers. Uh, They are who I use in my practice and absolutely couldn't work without them. Um, Their streamlined process processes are just make it really easy in dealing with clients and doing good documentation with your clinical notes. So be sure and check them out by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure and use the promo code Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. So there's that. And take care, folks. And also, as I mentioned, as you heard in the middle of, of the podcast, be sure and check out some of the other great podcasts out there that are part of the Sitecraft Network. And you can just simply go to sitecraftnetwork.com and check them out. There's a lot of good folks there and a lot of good information for your listening pleasure. So take care, folks, and we'll be talking with you again next week. been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, part of the Sitecraft Network of Podcasts. You can find out more about the other great podcasts in the network by visiting sitecraftnetwork.com. 
And if you haven't done so already, please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com and get your free private practice startup guide, along with a lot of other great resources and webinars and free things just by visiting. Also, be sure to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. This podcast is intended to be educational in purpose and is not intended to give legal, accounting, or counseling advice. If you need a professional, find the right person for that.